Ooh. My bad. TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be, so just leave a like, comment. Subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Turbulence. <laughs> uh, right here behind me is the... Uh, we might post highlights, but you could just go to Twitch and replay the whole stream if you missed the uh, thing. Don't forget, we do got merch. You get me. And we also got Patreon. Monday through Friday, we post. Got like three, four new shows coming up. That's tough. 15-year-old charged with murder. Prison, gangsters, and crime. Samani lies. I'm not going to lie. When I first seen this, I thought it was Deontay Wilder. When I seen the thumbnail, I was like, oh, he got Deontay Wilder on here? That's crazy. And then I took a closer look and it wasn't him. So, all right. Like, anxiety about the police pulling up and stuff like that. But, yeah, I'm just chilling. Anxiety. A 15-year-old boy has been cleared of murdering a rapper who was stabbed to death at a teenage party which spiraled out of control after... Going viral on social media, the defendant, who cannot be named for legal reasons, was found not guilty of killing 16-year-old Shoki on August 15th. Oh, Shoki. Okay. S shares his experience of the night that forever altered his life. He sheds light on the grim reality of night crime, emphasizes how easily and tragically lives can be lost. We appreciate S for sharing his story and will remember Shoki. With heartfelt condolences. Welcome to the taboo room. Bang. R.I.P. Shoki. This is a dude that did it? Or... Yeah, about the police pulling up and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just chilling. Um, probably gone to sleep that night. Um, yeah, woke up about three in the morning to a knock. And then there, yeah, I just knew it was the police. that like, I could feel the energy. Yeah, they came in and they said I'm arrested for murder. And that's it. So I was born in London. I lived with my mum till about 11 years old. And I started living primarily with my dad. Um, yeah, my childhood was pretty strict. My dad was a bit more lenient than my mum. And it was a good childhood. And what area was you growing up in again? Um, Peckham. And what was it like growing up in Peckham? It was rough. Um, probably the same as anywhere in London. Well, yeah, it was decent. Nice. And what about your education? Um, I was decent in school, sec first and second set between all my subject. Yeah. Um, yes, and talk to me about the incident, I guess, that changed your life forever. You said, uh, so he bust the case. So he beat the case, which led to S and S and R getting a whole lot of bad reps due to it. Was good, H. Um, well, I was arrested for a murder, probably the Shoki murder, as you don't know it. I was acquitted under self-defense. <laughs> hey, bro was guilty. Look at this guy. Look, hold on. Look. I was acquitted. Under Look how proud he is of beating that case. Look. Probably the Shoki murder, as you don't know it. I was acquitted. Under he tried his hardest not to smile. I I'm going to catch it. The self defense and found not guilty. So, how did that all begin? Um, mm -hmm. Just fused as a teenager, um, doing some bad stuff that I shouldn't really have been doing, making some poor decisions. That's it, to be honest. So, when you say poor decisions, what was the first thing that happened? Um, so, to my memory, I as a young boy, I probably um, went to Lucian to try and rob phones. And yeah, that's probably how the situation started. So you robbed someone's phone, yeah? Yeah, basically. And, and then what was the backlash from that? Um, he kind of called his older brothers, and then his older brothers came, basically, because I was standing in the same area like a donut. And then, yeah, we basically had a fight, and this is how I got the scar on my lip here. What happened? Um, the boy had a ring on his finger, and as we were fighting, 
I don't think he was really getting the better of me, but just because he had the ring, it's like it's left a mark on my face. So is it a case? You got a permanent mark. He got the better of you. Well, is it, who? So you, you rub you rub someone, and on the same day that these people came up to you, yeah. And it's like, how far apart were those two instants? Probably like twenty minutes apart. Twenty yeah, minutes apart. Fun. And I guess Quit. when you saw these people approaching you, did you realize what was about to happen? As a young you, I was a bit too overconfident. Like, I was telling them it was me. That kind of yeah, it was like they came up to me, asked who it was, and I said it was me. And then, and then what happened after that? Um, it was just a fight after that. He reacted, he punched me in my face, I punched him. You know what I'm saying? We were just squabbling. Then through the mist of everything happening, like my friends had kind of stopped and said, like, Rao, you're bleeding, that's like your lip, look at your lip. You know what I'm saying? I guess probably for people thought I got stabbed, caught the amount of blood, but nah, he just had a ring. And so you know, you've left that scene, and then what happened? Um, I've kind of felt like um, Shoki's older brother set me up. Like, that's how I felt. I felt like the only person who knew where I was at that specific time was Shoki's older brother. And how old was you and how old was the, the people in the incident? I'd say I was about 14, turning 15, and the guys were about, I'd say about 18, 19, maybe. Maybe 17, turning 18. Bro, Therefore, when I was a freshman in high school, there was like people 19, 18, 20, like, with like, bro, you graduated. Why are you? <laughs> why is you still in beef with high schoolers? Like, go, 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 start life. You you made it. <laughs> like, go do something better. Oh, had beards that I have now. And then, how did you react then? So that situation's happened. You've robbed someone. Then you've had a fight. Your lips got bust. Then what was happening? Um, I just felt angry after that. Honestly. I felt angry. Yeah, I felt angry after that. Needed that. Something needed to be resolved. He got he got, he got the best of him. Ain't no way. Like even if you bust your lip, if you get into a one on one, you squabbling. Or they you did he get in a one on one or they jumped him? It sounded like because it kind of sounded like they jumped him and it sounded like he got into a one on one. I don't know which one. But if it was just a one on one and he got. And he wasn't getting the best of you. He just had a ring on and caught you, but you still whooped him. Like you'd be like, "All right, cool. I'm good. I won." <laughs> There's something you're not telling us. Yeah, I felt angry after that. Needed that. Something needed to be resolved. And then what was next? Um. So a few incidents happened, but in between that. Um. We've kind of gone back and forth a few times, but uh, main incident, probably in Peckham. I've seen him again with my friends. And then, yeah, he's come up to us and he's probably like, oh, do you know who I am? My name's Shoki. Do you remember what happened last time and stuff like that? Just giving all the big, big ones. And yeah, nothing really happened with that situation. It was just kind of a conflict. But yeah, that's about it. And then I guess tie me to the day that I guess the incident oh, so he's in a, took place. He's an established artist. Like he's a this, this guy. He's S of S N R. Like before that, there's like a a party I went to in Bermondsey. Here's one thing you need to do before buying anything online. And boy, there was like 30 of them at like that party. There was like 30 of them. Um, I was with my girlfriend, I came there. So yeah, I was going to the party with my girlfriend now. Um, while well, I was meeting my girlfriend. Uh, not when I say established, I mean he's a rapper that y'all know about. Friend there, I met my friend first. We've gone to the party, we've seen these people and kind of like in the midst of seeing these people, my friend's gone missing. So I've gone into the shop to try and buy a drink and stuff like that. As I've come out the shop, people are calling my government name like, oh, sh Go back, go back, I'm sorry, bro. It, it, did you just hear what he said? Listen. And kind of like in the midst of seeing these people, my friend's gone missing. Your friend ran, he left you. 
Your friend seen the ops. He seen it was 30 of them. He was, man, let me slick get up out of here. He ran. I hope you're not friends with him no more. Continue. So I've gone into the shop to try and buy a drink and stuff like that. As I've come out the shop, people are calling my government name like, oh, Shamar, Shamar, is that Shamar, yeah? And I've looked around and I've seen it's like Shokis, older brother, and a whole lot of people, like 15, 16 people. A couple of pecker mutes there, having a little feud, a little argument, um, trying to defuse the situation. And then I've kind of lost the plot, kind of. And I've tried to kind of said, like, if you're going to do something, do it now. And everyone's kind of paused. And then after that, that's like, everyone just ran towards me. So I've started cutting out. Is this outside, yeah? Yeah, this is outside of the party, innit? So I haven't even got into the party yet. You get what I'm trying to say? So, yeah. So I made it home that day anyway. Yeah, but that was, a, that was. So you fast. So you said, if you're going to do something, do it now. And they start, they got on that. And you said you cut out, you ran. So what happened to your girlfriend? She ran with you or you just, <laughs> you was just, at this point you single. Okay, continue. That was the last incident before I actually seen him at the party where he died. And so was that, so this is a different day to the actual incident? Yeah, that was a different day to the actual incident. Um, and then when was the next time that you crossed paths? The next time we crossed paths after that, yeah, it would have been the party that he died. So talk me through the, the day and the party itself. So yeah, um, the morning I woke up of the party, uh, my plan was to get two t-shirts, matching t-shirts for me and my girlfriend. Oh, okay, so you reconciled, y'all talked about it. You told her like, they not here for you, they was here for me. So I ran, I knew they wasn't gonna chase you. I was trying to take their attention away from you by running the opposite way. It's W man's, okay. So, um, yeah, I've gone to West End that early morning, got two T-shirts, come back, um, shout out my girlfriend, she's preparing for the party, helping, whatever. I've gone to drop the T-shirts off, asked if they needed anything else, help. They didn't really need my help. Gone to meet my friends, chilling, getting some pre-drinks. And that's about it. Gone, gone to the party, um, chilling in the party for about maybe half an hour. 45 minutes max. Um, yeah, chilling in the party and then we're just hearing loud screams of girls like, oh, Shoki's hair, Shoki's hair, like kind of fan behavior. Um, I'm kind of confused because I'm thinking that like, I'm two seconds away from my area. Like, you're from Lucian, like, what are you doing at a party in Peckham? You know what I'm saying? Like, especially like my close, like my girlfriend's close friends to party. You know what I'm saying? He was moving like he was running the situation. Okay, talk okay, to me. So, yeah, he's ended up coming. Uh, me and my friend have decided to leave and go towards his nan's to get... I can't remember what we were going to get. I can't... Uh, kitchen. I can't remember what we were going to get. But we walked to, to go to his nan's. As we got to the front door, we bumped into Shoki coming into the party. You know what I'm saying? My friend's kind of startled, that he's kind of froze up. Is this the same friend that ran the first time? Why are you still kicking it with him? We know he's not like that. Okay, all right. Uh, my man's like, yeah, well, you, yeah? And then, yeah, he backed out his knife. I've gone to the kitchen. When he's bucked out his knife, what have you thought? I picked the software engineering. It's a W ad placement. I didn't really have a thought process, you know? It was just more of a reaction, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm more reacted, gone to the kitchen, got the kitchen knife, and as I've come back, he's, like, literally right at the kitchen door, you know what I'm saying? So I've just swung, swung twice, and then, like, he's kind of stumbled back towards the front door, pushed him through the front door, locked the front door, and went through the back. Um, if that's how that happened, that's that's self-defense. It's R.I.P. Shoki. But if that is how that went down, legitimately, that's self-defense. I was about to get up out of there. I went to the door. My boy, who's already, we already know he's not built like that. He ran. He got startled. He froze up. But he backed out his knife. 
What was I supposed to do? Die? No. I, no. No, you're not. In my opinion, RIP, but no, you are not supposed to D.I.E. Go defend yourself. Ran to the kitchen, but he, but he pursued because when he grabbed the, the kitchen blade, he turned around and he was at the door of the kitchen. So that means he chased him to the kitchen with the, the knife out. What was everyone's reaction at that time? Like, I feel like the party was still kind of going on. So until he went outside and he R. started Peter. bleeding on the floor, I don't think anyone really realised what happened. Because it was like, in the spare of the moment kind of thing. It wasn't in front of everybody. It wasn't in front of the main party. It was that right at the front door. You get what I'm saying? Literally. And that's happened. That is true. We only get to hear one side, but I'm pretty sure there was witnesses there. It was a party full of people. What have you done there? Um, I've walked over the back garden and I've just made my way home, literally. What's worrying for your head now that, you, that that instance happened? Funny enough, the first thing that came to my head was self-defense. Funny enough. But, but yeah, I, I didn't really have much thoughts, much thought process. Um, obviously, I didn't know he had passed away yet, so yeah, I didn't... Not many thoughts, not, not many negative thoughts come across my mind after that. I was on my way home. And then by the time I got home, obviously, I've seen all the That's what I'm saying. Like, bro got pressured. He got put back against the wall. What you supposed to do? He posts. And that's when it's kind of hit me that, bro, that my man's dead. You know what I'm saying? When you're seeing them, I guess, then what's happening in your head? Um, more like disappointment to family, what Joe's going to be like. You know what I'm saying? What? I don't know. I was kind of complacent with the fact that I was in that situation, if you know what I mean. Did the like, time, I'm ready to do the time type situation. I don't know, it just felt, it felt, it felt right, to be honest. Like, I knew he was gonna say it felt good. I knew it. Shoot, I'm alive. I'm, I feel good. Felt right, I'm here. Like, it didn't feel wrong, if you know what I mean. I felt like what I was going through, I was meant to go through. And how old are you back then, this? Uh, 15. 15, yeah. Yeah, 15 still. And so day one goes past, and then what, what are people saying? Are people messaging you? Or what's the situation now? Um, yeah, a whole load of death threats, a whole load of messages, a whole load of people that knew me and probably trying to expose certain pieces of information that they felt like was valuable, but yeah, like, it was all to show me you really fucked with me. Honestly, that was it. That was it. And then when did the police get involved? Um, I'll say the police got involved on the 7th. Sev the 7th, yeah, the 7th I got arrested. That's when I got arrested, the 7th. And he died on the 5th of August. Tell me about the day that you got arrested. What happened there? So uh, the day I got arrested, um, just a normal day being inside. Like, but let me clarify, man. There is no right or wrong in this situation, but there is reaction and there is action and reaction. So, one action warranted a reaction. Like, still kind of fresh. Still got like anxiety about the police pulling up and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just chilling. Um, probably gone to sleep that night. Um, yeah, woke up about three in the morning to a knock. And then there, yeah, I just knew it was the police that like, I could feel the energy. Yeah, they came in and they said, I'm arrested for murder, and that's it. What, what did your family say at that stage? Like, at that stage, my family was mm, aware that something had happened. So I don't think they were surprised when the police came if you know what I mean, that the reaction was before the police came, if you get me, because they knew what happened before the police came. Uh, what, what did they say to you? When, when, or did they, it was a case they knew, but they didn't know? Like, honestly, I, like, I know my mum was probably upset with the situation, but happy with the outcome. And so with my dad, upset about the situation, but happy with the outcome. Car.
yeah, it could have been flipped on both sides. I could have been dead. He could have been alive. You get what I'm saying? But it was just about who was quicker. So now you've been arrested. Uh, what's happening now? Um, so, yeah, I'm in the station two, three days, interviewed non-stop, probably like six, seven interviews. Um, I've got reminded to a secure unit in Bristol. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all, man. If if you if, if you're familiar with the streets, or you from the streets, or you or you in the streets heavily, you know two things. If you back if you pull if you pull out your weapon, you better use it immediately. That's the first thing. The second thing is we all know when there's a free free K I L L situation. And in this situation, S got him a free one. Like once, I'm, once again, R.I.P. But that's a free K.I.L.L. And that's how he moving. That what that's what we call self defense. Is a free a free K.I.L.L. Like I'm in a self defense situation. I'm striking. Now, if Shoki would have pulled it out and actually went for it, Shoki, what is he going to jail for? An M. Ain't no getting away from that. And not a self-defense. It's an M. And I've gone caught. Then I've got some like, reminder to a secure unit in Bristol. And yeah, I'm just in the secure unit from then. And then slowly getting the pieces of evidence and stuff like that. But, yeah. And what's going through your head as, as a 15-year-old in a secure unit? Um, like after the... Once again, you know, you're right. You only have one side of the story, but we're witnesses, and, but still. After the three days in the police station, I was kind of glad to be in a secure unit, honestly. Like, the image I had of Joe in my head, the secure unit didn't portray that. Civilian? Like, it kind of looked like a, a kid's home that you get locked down in. Your door locks, but yeah, that was about it. I was kind of happy to be in there, not the police station. But you see yeah. what I'm saying? Even the way he's saying certain things, like, you know it was self-defense. <laughs> like, it don't sound like he was out here trying to move maliciously. He was just trying to, you know, as a kid, he was defending himself. It wasn't the worst of experiences. Like, he could like, that question, he could have went cap crazy. I, he could have capped out. But just the response, the answer to the question was like, oh, okay. How long was you in this secure unit for? Six months. And you started getting yeah. evidence from the trial while you was in there? Or yeah. Like where? yeah, within that two, three months of being in there, I started getting evidence that a bit more every week or every two weeks. And talk to me about what, what paperwork you was reading the scene. Um, a lot of paperwork, like a lot of statements from people at the party, a lot of statements from Shoki's party, like, the people that was on his side, a lot of statements from people that was on my side. Yeah, just a whole load of things. Which I guess is a bit mind-blowing to me, because when I'm speaking to a lot of people in that world, yeah. the number one rule is you don't talk to the police. Definitely. And that was a big point for me, realising how fake this street life is in yeah, my was career anyway. Like, from 15, I knew that a lot of people don't stand on what they mean. Yeah. And then when you was reading the statements, what were the statements saying? And who, who was saying what? Um, just a lot saying that, yeah, S done it, um, how he done it, um, describing hand motions. Um, yeah, that's it. Like, anything you can think of, anything you can think of. The things that shouldn't, people shouldn't be saying that people were saying, yeah. And when you're reading these statements, what's going through your head? Once you click this video, you'll be taken to uscca.com slash maps. From here, you can click on any state and get a complete break. That, I don't know, I just, did, I just didn't believe in the street stuff no more. Honestly. Yes. Like, I felt like they was meant to be the savages standing on what they're saying, and they wasn't. And then tell me about when you went to court. Oh, when I went to court. How long, how long was your court case? My court case, so what, the trial? So my trial was, I think it was four weeks, you know, 
four to five weeks, and I think it took them an extra week to come with the verdict. <laughs> but yeah, trial was a bit hectic. Traveling from Bristol to London every day was a bit, yeah. So talk me through, I guess, the whole trial from the start to finish. Um, so they've picked the jury. Um, I've given my plea of not guilty. And then I think it was for the prosecution to serve their evidence. They didn't really have much evidence. They had no um, clothing, no knife, no CCTV. You know, just character witness statements. That's it, witness statements. That's all they had. Um, they had no knife, no clothing. What you do? What, what happened to them? That's tough. Did you say you was confident going to the court case? Uh, I'll say about 60, 40, 60 percent being confident. I was confident because of the evidence that they had. I didn't think they had enough evidence to prove that I intended to kill him. Yeah, I don't think they had, the evidence wasn't pretty strong. But yeah, it was just about me proving my point and getting my side of the story across clearly. And what was the strongest evidence that I was throwing? The strongest evidence? The strongest evidence was probably my family saying that I came home and said I'd done something. That was probably the strongest evidence. But how did you feel when you heard that? I'm a bit upset, but as I get older, you can't blame no one. You put someone in a, 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 a dodgy situation, you don't know what the outcome is going to be, in it. Literally. And I guess, talk me through the highs and the lows of the trial for you. Um... I guess the high, in the, the high in the trial for me was on like, the second day they brought out um, the suspected murder weapon and it had Shoki's blood on it. And I knew for 100% sure that, that that wasn't a murder weapon. So from that day, I was kind of 100% sure that that was one of their knives. And that would have come out positively for me if that was found true. Yeah. But yeah, in the end of it was... Um, his brother. Facts, because there would be traces of his DNA on that knife if it was the murder weapon. And forensics would, would have found that. From a private investigator, like a private forensic, like his own, to run their own test. With fingerprints on a knife and Shoki's blood on See? the spot. Yeah, in the end of it was um, his brother's fingerprints on a knife and Shoki's blood on the knife. See? So yeah, he must have been touching himself and then realise, oh shit, I got a knife. Then, yeah, his brother must have taken it and tried to hide it or something like that. But, yeah, about two knives got found, both with the brother's fingerprints and one with Shulky's blood on it. And what would you say was the lowest part of the trial? Nah. You said, in America, would I say a person would also be acquitted in this situation? Yes, for sure. This is self-defense. It depends what state, though, but, but yeah, like, no, no, it's self-defense. He was in a house party. He ran and got that the, the knife from the kitchen. So, yeah, definitely would have been self-defense. I guess the lowest part of the trial was um, seeing the, the prosecution make up lies or narratives to suit what they're trying to say to try and make me look even worse than the situation actually was. That's the job. So, yeah, that was probably the worst part of the trial. Um, talk me through the verdict. The verdict was not guilty under self-defence, um, basically meaning that it was a lawful killing, that I defended myself. Literally. But what, what reaction did you have at that stage or what went for you? Oh, I, I, in that stage, I was actually in the secure unit, so I wasn't actually in court. Because for the verdict, um, they was trying to find out for about a week or so. So they didn't want to keep sending me from Bristol to court, from Bristol to London every day. So yeah, I was just waiting for the verdict. They come through. I think I was in English, to be precise, English education called me, telling me, my solicitor wants to speak to me. 
I was thinking that like, maybe this is some new evidence or something, or maybe they got something bad to tell me. Then, yeah, they said they got my verdict. Um, yeah, once they said I got my, they got my verdict, I was just sitting in a room waiting for them to bring my verdict. Heart pounding, like, fuck. Yeah, and then um, the juror stand, stood up and told me, yeah, not guilty oh, on the self defense. The most amazing feeling in the world, literally. That must have been, yeah, like you said, bro, that must have been insane that day. Yeah, like, I don't think I can match that feeling ever again, honestly. No, you what was can't. You, what was you looking at time wise? Uh, personally, 22 minimum. Going on the case facts, I don't think I would have got murder ever. Like, even if I got found guilty, I don't think I would have got murder. Manslaughter? Just the fact that he got caught with his knife and there was fingerprints on it. Yeah, so I would have got manslaughter or something. So I probably would have said 15, maybe 12 do half, something like that. I don't think I would have got like a 25 or a 17 do the whole stretch. And was you nervous every day in that secure unit? Yes. Mm, nervous as in what, in terms of my case? Or nervous as in being in a secure unit? I guess in terms of the case and what, what could happen? Not really, you know. There was like a few people that, were, that got sentenced for murder and they got manslaughter and their situation was a lot more different to mine. Like a guy's, a guy's stepdad, um, was abusing his mum and he and his brother stabbed him up multiple times. He's died and he got 12 new six. You know what I'm saying? And that was just because of the fact that he was abusing his mother. You know what I mean? So you put someone in a life or death situation, I kind of knew that my case was going to be a bit different to his, but using the facts, I should be fine. You know what I mean? And then you've been released and come home, and what was life like then? I kind of thought it was going to go back to normal, you know, but it never did, honestly. No, sir. It never did. It never went back to normal. I never moved back to Peckham like I was meant to, like I thought I was going to do. I never went back to my original home after that. So, yeah, it's just been Couldn't. going back you to can't. reality and trying to find my normal again. Yeah, so was there any repercussions when you come home? Um, no, no repercussions, just more death threats than anything else. That's it, more death threats, huh? Mm. He said basically what he's saying, if nobody else, all verbal. Well, give me tough. context for death threats, what all people say. Um, you're going to get what's coming to you one day, probably you're dead. Probably but get back, got no time. Things, fam, but yeah, just, just words. Got no time frame. How did that affect you? Because at 15, 16 here, and that's, I'm pretty sure it's not good for your mental health. I feel like it affected me for a while until I realised people were just going to say anything to suit their story. You know what I mean? So whatever story they were trying to push, whatever information they felt like was true or not, they were just going to push it to the front of the story. Push it to the front of the limelight. How would, you, how would you say that instance changed? I don't feel like he snitched. <laughs> See, self-defense. And at the same time, not one time in this whole scenario did he ever say, I was moving out here moving like a gangster. I didn't hear it. That's not how I interpreted anything. I said, I was a child. <laughs> Life? Or your mindset? Um... I'm a bit more calculated on where I go. Uh, I'm kind of clued up on this street stuff. It don't really, don't really mean nothing. You don't really get nothing positive from this street life. It doesn't make you bad to murder somebody. Anyone can do it, literally. It's just about making decisions, honestly, on what you want to do and what you don't want to do. All right, Peter. So, and that's what, what advice would you give to guest people who are in that road life at 15, 16 now? Yeah. Be yourself. Be yourself. No matter if it's right or wrong, because you're not going to regret being yourself. Honestly. It's good advice. Just be yourself. Be true to yourself. Whatever you really want to do, chase it. Don't chase it because your friend is doing it. Don't chase it because you see something on TV. Just do it because you genuinely, genuinely want to do it. 
That's good advice. Yeah, just take time, reflect on what you want to do and live your life the way you want to live it. And if you had one wish, what would that be? If I had one wish... <laughs> if I had one wish, I'd probably just... Uh, better my family's life in general, financially, health-wise. Uh, honestly, I'd just build an empire for my family. That's what I would do if I had one wish. And where are you today in your life? What's going on there with you? Um, I'm going to uni, studying music production. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to build my life back. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm doing music, trying to release a couple songs, just trying to find my sound at the moment. I feel like I found my sound, but it's just um, the direction I want to go. So yeah, it's just about releasing music, getting better with my production skills. And yeah, that's it. And before we finish this, is there anything that you want to say? Um, not really. <laughs> um, you lot might know me as SNRS. I'm gonna be changing my name to so many L's. So if you see so many L's. All right. I said everything I had to say, man. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. RIP to everybody. I'm gone.